I love Milwaukee. I was the one that picked Milwaukee, I have to tell you. I was the one that picked it. These lion people that they say, oh, he doesn't like Milwaukee. I love Milwaukee. I said, you got to fix the crime. We all know that. You got to make sure the election's honest. But I'm the one that picked Milwaukee. Wrong. Uh, Mayor, thanks for being here. So the former president, he's now saying publicly he loves your city, but he did, according to those sources, call it horrible in private. What's your reaction to the backtrack here from the podium tonight? You know, it is really, really interesting, Abby, to hear uh, former President Trump say now that he all of a sudden loves Milwaukee and that he even selected Milwaukee. Look, uh, Abby, as you mentioned, I'm a Democrat and the mayor of the largest city in the state, and we're proud to host the Republican National Convention. We worked really, really hard uh, to get the convention. The folks at the RNC have been great. Right before I was initially elected mayor, I took time off the campaign trail to go to Washington, D.C., to go to the RNC headquarters, to do the final pitch to bring the RNC here. And it was the RNC that selected Milwaukee. I think I would, would remember if Donald Trump had anything to do with that. He was nowhere to be found. That is a complete fabrication. I am stunned by that. Welcome back to What Was That? I'm Gabe Sanchez. Donald Trump found himself giving another incoherent speech, but this time it was in Wisconsin, just days after he insulted the state by calling Milwaukee a horrible city. Look, I went to school in Milwaukee and lived there for several years, so Donald Trump can go f himself. Milwaukee is a beautiful city. So even though multiple people have confirmed that Donald Trump trashed Milwaukee, he is now trying to backpedal and claim that he never said that. According to him, it's all fake news. I love Milwaukee. I was the one that picked Milwaukee, I have to tell you. I was the one that picked it. These lying people that they say, oh, he doesn't like Milwaukee. I love Milwaukee. I said, you got to fix the crime. We all know that. You got to make sure the election's honest. But I'm the one that picked Milwaukee and uh, the Democrats or the radical left lunatics, as I call them. What they say is uh, just so terrible. They lie, lie, lie. They have a horrible candidate. They have a candidate that has no clue, doesn't know where he is, and all they can do is lie. I love it. I'm the one that picked Milwaukee officially. So, and you had, and I think you had about 10 congressmen in a meeting that we had recently where I said how much I like Milwaukee. They all came out. They said, that's what he said. We can't help it. And they're truthful people. But I just want to begin by saying, Hello, Wisconsin. Hello. Oh, it was Trump's idea to have the convention in Milwaukee. Sure, Jan. Trump loves Milwaukee so much that he wasn't even going to stay there during the convention. Well, that was until reporters caught wind of him planning to stay in Chicago instead. I'm sure that this may have come up in your planning for these, this convention, but the reporting that we just heard from the New York Times reporter is that this morning, he was Trump was planning to stay in Chicago. Now he's planning to stay in Milwaukee. Your reaction to that, and do you... Were there plans for the eventual nominee to stay somewhere in your city uh, once they were selected? You know, this is another one of those just kind of funny things. Like, you would imagine that the nominee would stay in the city, especially as he claims it, let him tell it, right, that he chose Milwaukee, that he would stay here. But if he thinks that Milwaukee is a horrible place, okay, that's one thing, um, and he was going to stay in Chicago. But what about even the wow counties, you know, the, the, the counties around Milwaukee, the, the, the reddest uh, parts of the states uh, that uh, produce the most Republican votes? He wasn't even willing to stay in those places, opting instead to, to go across a state line, go and stay in, in Chicago and then come up uh, to receive the nomination. Like that, that just goes to show you that he doesn't care about Milwaukee, much less the entire state of Wisconsin. He wouldn't even stay here, not even in one of our next door counties counties that produces the most Republican votes in the entire state of Wisconsin. Like, this is, this is, this is an interesting, interesting campaign. Uh, this, the, the RNC will be interesting, and it'll be interesting because Donald Trump is making these decisions and saying things that, uh, that folks just can't really put a finger on. Interesting is definitely one way to put it. Donald Trump doesn't care about anyone but himself. That includes the people of Wisconsin. He's just trying to save face after getting exposed as a liar. Donald Trump, the guy who keeps bragging about acing his cognitive test, is having a difficult time keeping track of events, 
things he said and lies he's told, especially when people have receipts, like Milwaukee Mayor Johnson or author Raman Satuta, who interviewed Trump multiple times after he left the White House. Start off about your sit downs with Trump six times after he left the White House, which, you know, is such a different period thinking about what's happening in Virginia tonight and seeing his grip on the Republican Party. Uh, I mean, what was he like? What did you observe from him when you sat down with him? So I interviewed Donald Trump more than any other journalist since he's left the White House. We started in May 2021, and that report you just talked about, about meandering and confusing, is right. He goes from one story to the next. He struggles with the chronology of events. He seems very upset. Um, that he wasn't respected by certain celebrities in the White House, and then he'd go to a story about The Apprentice. So as you know, Caitlin, it's very challenging to interview Donald Trump and to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, but there was some cognitive questions about where he was and what he was thinking, and um, he would, he would from time to time become confused. Because you wrote at one point about Joan Rivers, him telling you that, that she voted for him in 2016, I believe, even he though- He confidently told me and declared that Joan Rivers voted for him when he ran for president. And Joan Rivers died in 2014. Uh, Joan Rivers died in 2014, so she would not have been able to vote for Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a person who is losing his mind, and it is incredibly apparent in his speeches, like the one he gave in Racine, Wisconsin. The fast track to rapid citizenship. So, what? Joe Bright. Huh? Joe Biden's forming, granting. What? Now, the J6 committee. I call it the unselect committee. They're they're unselect. They're the most unselect. We should have people like you. We should have put Vivek on the committee, right? Uh, one small problem there, Donnie. In order to be on the January 6th unselect committee, you had to be in Congress. This guy doesn't even know how the government works or that his own lackey Ramaswamy hasn't served a day in Congress. Most of the time, Trump just stands at the podium, mumbling, making up lies, and then smiling. Which reminds me, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Smile Actives. Have you ever wished that you had a whiter and brighter smile? Well, before you visit a dentist, you should know that their whitening treatments can be very expensive and it's not just the price. You also have to book the appointment and schedule time away from work or family to sit in a dentist's office chair while undergoing the procedure. It's a hassle. Fortunately, now you can try Smile Actives at home or anywhere, anytime. Smile Actives offers a safe and affordable alternative to those expensive whitening procedures. I've used other teeth whitening products in the past. They're a huge inconvenience for something that should be much easier. And thanks to Smile Actives, it is easier. 97% of Smile Actives users in a clinical study reported up to six shades whiter on average, all within 30 days. Simply add Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel to your regular toothpaste. It's been formulated with PolyClean technology to boost stain removal and deliver active whitening ingredients into teeth's grooves and crannies to get better whitening. Smile Actives makes a teeth whitening gel that can simply be added to your toothpaste every time you brush your teeth. So no change in your routine, no extra time, and no more messy strips, trays, or lights. People will start commenting on your whiter, brighter smile in just days. Smile Actives is the whitening boost your favorite toothpaste needs to give you the smile you deserve. Visit smileactives.com slash Gabe today to receive a special buy one get one free offer with auto delivery plus free shipping and handling that's smileactives.com slash gabe terms and conditions apply see site for details but the unselect committee of political thugs the evidence was so bad and so compelling against the democrats and against the people that are supposed to be doing that job that they destroyed and deleted all of the info. Everything is deleted. At this point, this lie has been debunked more times than Donald Trump has creepily fantasized about sleeping with his own daughter. I said, honey, I'll tell you, it was unbelievable. How good was it? It was unbelievable. The crowd, nobody's ever seen a crowd. That broke every record in New Jersey history. Nobody's ever seen a hundred, and I don't have a guitar. Don't forget, Elvis had a guitar. I don't have a guitar, I have nothing. I stand up here by myself. Terrible. What the hell is he talking about? All right, ignoring the Elvis gibberish that Trump just said, he is still trying to push the lie that his New Jersey rally had over 100,000 people, when in actuality, it had only a few thousand people and most left after he started speaking. If you couldn't tell already, Trump is very fixated on the size of his crowds. And look, I'm no psychiatrist, but it seems to stem from Trump's small you know, and don't take my word for it, just listen to Stormy Daniels. Which of these mushrooms, orange mushrooms, would most represent the Are commander okay? in chief so of the United States military? Oh! 
Is this the one? It's a nothing! But I gotta say, the weirdest thing that Trump talked about was crypto. To further secure America's future and create opportunity for young people, I will end Joe Biden's war on crypto. We will ensure that the future of crypto and the future of Bitcoin will be made in America. Otherwise, other countries are going to have it. The other countries are going to have it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Does Donald Trump think that people are manufacturing actual coins? Like, he doesn't actually think that there are people physically mining bitcoins out in some mine in Wyoming or Virginia, right? Seriously, who wrote this speech? This might be one of the dumbest things that Trump has said lately. What's that? He's using AI to write his speeches? I had a speech rewritten by AI out there, one of the top people. He said, oh, you're going to make a speech? Yeah. He goes, click, click, click. And like... 15 seconds later, he shows me my speech. That's crazy. written. That's great. <laughs> so beautifully, I said, I'm going to use this sucker. I'm going to I'm going to I've never seen anything like it. it. What'd you say to your speechwriter after that? You fired. You're fired. I said, <laughs> yeah, I said, you're fired, Vince. What an idiot. Oh, what a loser. Trump has no idea what crypto is, which is kind of funny when you remember that the guy fleeced his supporters for everything they had so he could sell them scammy NFTs. And you know how Donald Trump is preparing for the debate? You just saw it in Racine, Wisconsin. You saw it in the South Bronx. You see it in Wildwood, New Jersey. You see it in West Palm Beach. He goes and talks to the people about the record of accomplishments for four years and then the vision for the next four. Actually, you know what? That's a great idea, Kellyanne. Let's fact check the accomplishments and claims that Trump talked about during his speech. He said there was world peace in 2020. There was very much not. He said he won Wisconsin in 2020. He lost. He said the Democrats rigged the 2020 election a lie. He said people around President Biden cheat on elections. No, he said people's votes tend to disappear. They simply do not. He said 107,000 people attended his recent rally in New Jersey. That's at least tens of thousands too high. He said he saved Kenosha, Wisconsin in 2020 during rioting when the Democratic governor wouldn't act to intervene. In fact, that governor deployed the National Guard before Trump told him to. Trump said cocaine was found at the White House about a month ago. That was actually about 11 months ago. He said it was hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cocaine. It was a little bag, maybe generously in hundreds of dollars worth. He said Biden orchestrated his New York criminal trial, zero evidence of that. He said Biden was also behind all of his cases, including civil trials, baseless again. He said Biden wandered off at the G7 and didn't know where he was. No, Biden was briefly chatting with a skydiver who had landed near the group. He said he was indicted more than infamous Al Capone. No, Al Capone had more indictments than him. He said he was in Washington the other day for one of his trials. He was actually there for meetings with congressional Republicans. He said Nancy Pelosi turned down his offer of 10,000 soldiers on January 6th. She never got such an offer, offer and would not have had the power to reject it even if she did. He said the January 6th committee deleted all records, just did not happen. He said he's the only president who didn't start a war. Jimmy Carter didn't start any wars. He said he finished the war in Syria no, and got U.S. soldiers out. He actually left hundreds of troops there. He said Syria and Turkey have been fighting over their border for, quote, 2,000 years. That border, Abby, is less than a century old. He said insane asylums are being emptied by foreign countries to let people come to the U.S. as migrants. His own campaign cannot substantiate this claim. And he also said prisoners are coming in from jails in the Congo over the border. His campaign can't substantiate that either. He said President Obama cannot deport criminals to Latin American countries. Obama Obama, in fact, could. He said Venezuela's crime is down 72% because of emigration to the U.S. Venezuela's violent deaths are actually down 25%, and that's for a variety of reasons. He said 17 or 18 million people have now entered illegally over the border. Experts say that's many millions too high. He said Biden's plans would quadruple your taxes. Total fiction. He said canceling Keystone XL, the pipeline, costs 48,000 jobs. That is wildly inflated. He said total inflation under President Biden is 40 or 50 it's actually 19%. He said before he took office, there was a 500 billion trade deficit with China. It has never been that high. And in fact, the record was set under Trump in 2018. He said no previous president has taken in even 10 cents in tariff money from China. It is Americans who pay those tariffs. And the US has actually had such tariffs on China since the 1700s. And finally, he said we're in the worst crime wave in modern history. Crime has actually plummeted in 2023 and so far in 2024. Abby.
and it's only Tuesday. Now, if that is how Trump prepares for his debates, meaning just a ton of lies and made up stories, then he's in for a rude awakening, especially when he tries to take credit for the things that President Biden accomplished during his presidency. But it's also telling of how scared Trump's team is right now by the amount of TV interviews they keep doing to cover up his issues. Donald Trump's uh, mental recall, that the ability of him to go off script for hours in front of crowds of thousands of people and, and recall stories from decades ago. I mean, trust me, I work for the man. I am a, a young woman uh, and it's hard to keep up with him. He's constantly working around the clock and Americans see that. And that's why they don't feel the same way about Donald Trump's competence as they do about Joe Biden's because they believe their own eyes well, very simply in America. Well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. What was that is made possible by viewers like you. And if you'd like to support the show and help us grow, you can contribute to my personal Patreon at patreon.com slash I am Gabe Sanchez. Thank you for your support. So until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez and this has been What Was That?